Hello, welcome to Papa Nick's Music. I am, as always, your host, Papa Nick Lewis. And today we're looking back. We're looking back. Oh, are we looking back? Um, quick history of, of Papa Nick's Music, the YouTube channel. I started this channel eight years ago. And the, the reason I started it was so that I would have a place where I could post videos of demos of songs that I was working on. Um, and I was doing that, I was putting up songs, uh, some uh, uh, performance videos, but mostly songs. Um, and then uh, last year I decided to start doing these uh, videos where I sat here and, and babbled about music for a little while, uh, largely because I enjoy watching this kind of stuff, so I wanted to participate in the conversation. Um, and I posted my first, first discussion video last June. So I've been doing this for a little over a year here. Um, and I've been thinking about going back and revisiting some of the topics that I did early on in the run. Um, but when I realized last week, the video that I posted, uh, my top 10 Brian May penned Queen songs, that was my 50th video. So I thought, okay, the time is right. <laughs> and coincidentally, it gives me something I can talk about for a few weeks while I'm listening to my queen <laughs> before I do my album ranking. So for the next few weeks, I'm going to be going back and looking at topics that I've already talked about over the past year. I'm going to pick out my three most popular topics. It's not hard to see which ones I'm going to do. If you do a search of my videos, just arrange them by uh, popularity. You're going to see that most of my videos will get anywhere from, you know, you know the real the 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 real snoozers as far as the audience goes. Um, a, a very low ranking. It it just breaks my heart that I still haven't cracked twenty views on my knack album ranking video because I'm such a big fan of the knack. But usually I'm in the forty fifty to you know hundred hundred and twenty you know that neighborhood. I'm in I'm in that area in terms of views. But I have three videos that are well out. Uh, ahead of the pack in terms of the number of people who've watched them. So I'm going to revisit those three topics. And we're kicking it off with uh, the, the, the video that started it all. Um, last June, I posted my Beach Boys album ranking video. And as of today, that thing has 776 views. Uh, today being Thursday, August 10th. Um, so I want to revisit the Beach Boys. Makes sense that I would be revisiting the Beach Boys because I am a huge fan of the Beach Boys. That's why that was my first video because I love the Beach Boys. Um, and so my first thought was that I would do a top 10. The top 10 series here at Pop and X Music is unofficially sponsored by Schoferhofer Beer. Mmm, that's good beer. Um, and so I wanted to do a top 10. I mean, it gives me a reason to drink my beer, right? Um, and so I thought, okay, I'll just do a straight up top 10. These are my 10 favorite Bee Gees, uh, Beach Boys songs. Bee Gees songs? My 10 favorite Beach Boys songs. And then I realized this was going to be a nightmare. So I thought, okay, I'll do a, a top 40. Uh, and I went through every album uh, and I picked out every song that I liked well enough that I would want to talk about it and, and stopped when I had about 65 songs on the list. I mean, it was just... It's like, I'm not going to be able to get this down to 40. I mean, geez. Um, and so I, I, I struggled to come up with something that, some way that I could narrow this down to a top 10. And what I came up with was, okay, I'm a big fan of the Beach Boys. I'm assuming that most of you watching this are big fans of the Beach Boys. I'm assuming that the 776 people who watched my first video are watching it because they are fans of the Beach Boys. I'm not assuming that I'm just pulling in folks off the street who are who are uh, interested to see what, what this guy has to say about anything. But those of us who are fans of the Beach Boys are, in the grand scheme of things, a fairly small slice of the overall public, right? Um, I would, there are a few assumptions that I'm making here. One of the assumptions that I'm making is that if you are a sentient adult human being, you are familiar with the Beach Boys, particularly if we're talking about uh, America, the UK, uh, and the YouTube metrics tell me that the overwhelming majority of people who are watching these videos is uh, American or British. So I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming 
um, that if we are adults who live in America or who live in the UK, we know who the Beach Boys are. We may not be fan. We may not think of ourselves as fans of the Beach Boys, but these, the Beach Boys are a cultural touchstone. If you are a sentient adult, you are familiar with Good Vibrations and California Girls and Fun 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 and Little Deuce Coop and Surfer Girl. These may not be your favorite songs in the world, but you know them. You recognize them when you hear them. You know Kokomo as soon as you start hearing it. Um, whether you think of yourself as a fan of the band or not, you know some of the output of the of the band. And so I don't want to to spend any time talking about that stuff. I, I don't want to talk about my, you know, uh, out of their top 40 charting hits, what are my 10 favorite? Because, yeah. so instead what I'm thinking of is, okay, if you approach me, you're, you're, you're familiar with the Beach Boys because you know those hits, but you're not necessarily sure why I would be such a fan of the Beach Boys. Why is it that you like the Beach Boys, you say to me? Nick, Nick, you say, Papa Nick, please, please. <laughs> Why is it that you like this band so much? Because when you think of the Beach Boys, you're thinking of, you know, fun, fun, fun. And I mean, it's a fun song and all, but come on. Um, so this this is my top 10 uh, songs that show why I love the Beach Boys. I am deliberately steering away from uh, hits. I could put good vibrations on this list because good vibrations is a big part of the reason why I love uh, the Beach Boys. But I assume you already know about that. So I'm trying to find 10 songs that if you are a casual fan or really not much of a fan at all of the Beach Boys, these are songs you may not know. Uh, if you're not a fan at all, then yeah, you shouldn't know any of these 10 songs. Uh, but these are 10 songs that I adore, that I love, that I, uh, I just, oh, there are a few things that would make me happier than sitting around and listening to these 10 songs. Um, by the way, I am going to make a Spotify playlist of these 10 songs. I'm going to include that playlist in the description below. Just in case you don't know these songs. Ready? Okay. Before we get into that top 10, a word from our unofficial sponsor, Schoferhofer Beer. It's beer. It's grapefruit soda. It's wonderful. Mm, that's good beer. <laughs> also, we got to do the subjectivity notice. This wouldn't be a Papa Next music video without me babbling about subjectivity. All artistic appreciation is subjective. There is no such thing as objectively good or objectively bad art. There is only art that I like and art that I do not like. All of the objective stuff that we talk about, all of the, the technical things that we can measure and that we can quantify, do not lead to... Uh, to inherent quality. They are rationalizations that we use to try to explain why we like what we like. Um, at the end of the day, it all just boils down to I like it because I like it or I don't like it because I don't like it. Uh, and as long as we keep that in mind, then this is a wonderful, fun, happy, informative, entertaining conversation. Uh, everything goes off the rails and becomes acrimonious as soon as we start thinking that one of us has to be right or wrong. So I'm not telling you that these are the 10 best Beach Boys songs to initiate the uninitiated. No, I'm telling you these are the 10 I would pick if you came up to me and asked me, what are 10 songs that I need to listen to if I want to see the Beach Boys the way you see them? Okay? Okay. With that being said, here's my top 10. Actually, that was a mouthful. Mm, that's good beer. Here are my 10 uh, favorite songs that, that show why I'm such a fan of the Beach Boys. Coming in at number 10, one of the things I like about the Beach Boys is that most of their albums, or okay, many of their albums have instrumentals on them. This makes sense when you think about how they started. They started as a surf band and, you know, surf guitar, <laughs> Dick Dale, <laughs> The Ventures, <laughs> Um, and so all of their early albums had, you know, a couple, three uh, surf guitar songs on them. But once they evolved out of that surfing band, um, they still kept doing instrumentals. And I like that. I like, uh, I like bands that have instrumental uh, numbers on their albums. Uh, and so for my token instrumental, I've got from 1968's album Friends, the song Passing By which is one of my favorite 
uh, instrumentals that, that Brian wrote. I really like this song. Uh, it's not a particularly complicated or complex song. Um, it's, it's a nice... It's got a nice, easy, memorable melody. Um, I think one of the things that I like about it is that while it is an instrument, it has vocals, but it does not have words. Um, Brian sings the melody, but he sings it with, ah, right? He's, he's doing that kind of stuff all the way through it. Um, and one of the things I enjoy about listening to that is that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm a decent singer. I'm not the best singer in the world, but I'm a decent singer. And, and I'm here to tell you, uh, is hard to do. It's hard to hit those notes without having the words, without having the consonants, for example, that help you, that help anchor you into the notes to just, to just use your voice alone to glide up and down is difficult without it seeming like you're Ah, right? I mean, it's hard to get distinct notes in there without the assistance of the consonants from the words. Um, and he nails it. I mean, it's just, you no, know, Passing By, a wonderful song. It's one of my favorite instrumentals, and it's my number 10 um, as far as songs that explain why I'm a fan of the Beach Boys. Coming in at number nine. It seems almost like malpractice if I have a, 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 a list of songs that explain why I like the Beach Boys if I don't have at least one summer fun song in here. So I'm going to put a summer fun song in here. Um, this is uh, one of the few songs on the list that uh, there's a, there is a chance that you know this song even if you're not a fan of uh, the, the Beach Boys. If you have ever seen the movie American Graffiti, then you have heard this song. Um, my uh, token uh, summer fun song is from 1964's All Summer Long. It is the title track, All Summer Long. Uh, it was used in the closing credits for American Graffiti, so uh, you may have heard it there. Um, and I th it's just a, it's a snappy little tune. It, it is every bit as uh, summer fun and let's go to the beach as, you know, fun, fun, fun is or Little Deuce Coop or... Uh, surf in USA, okay, yeah, Little Deuce Coop is a car song, not a surf song, but you know what I mean. They're, they're all kind of wrapped up in that summer fun uh, 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 melange. Is he using that word correctly? I'm not sure. Hmm. Maybe we should look that up. Um, <laughs> and all summer long fits right in with that. I mean, it's the, we've been having fun all summer long, right? It's just, it's a fun summer song. The thing I like about All Summer Long is that musically it's a little bit more complex. It's from one of the later, I mean, All Summer Long was their last straight up nothing but summer fun album. Um, and it's it's just a catchy little ditty. I don't understand why they didn't release it as a single. They should have. I think it would have been a, a monster hit for them. So for me, number nine on my list of reason, uh, songs that show why I'm a Beach Boys fan, number nine, All Summer Long. Okay. From here on out, we're getting into, for the most part, uh, I'm looking at my list. Yeah, for the most, these are all these are all deep album cuts. Not passing by wasn't a deep album cut. Jesus. Um, number eight. One of the things I love about the Beach Boys, obviously, those rich vocal harmonies, uh, the the wonderful arrangements of songs, uh, the 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 craftsmanship of the songwriting as much shit as I will heap on my club's head in just regular everyday conversation because who doesn't enjoy just bashing the hell out of Mike Love um, he was a hell of a songwriter in the 60s I mean he 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 was a a perfect lyricist to work with Brian Wilson um, and a a sterling example of just good quality pop uh, composition. Now that I'm saying this, I don't know if Mike Love co-wrote this. This uh, Brian, I'll have a crawl down here that tells who actually wrote this. I don't want to stop and and look it up. Um, it, 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 we're in San Antonio. It's 5,000 degrees outside. My my windows are about to burst into flame. I am not going to stop and go back and look something up. Um, but my number eight, as far as just quality pop songwriting, quality arrangement, and quality vocal uh, uh, arrangements, uh, musical arrangement and vocal arrangement is 
from 1965's The Beach Boys Today, my favorite song off that album, Kiss Me Baby. Um, Kiss Me Baby was released as a B-side, my note uh, on, my, on my spreadsheet tells me. Uh, it was the B-side to Help Me Rhonda, which made it all the way to number one. So there is a chance that you might have had uh, access to that uh, single uh, of Help Me Rhonda and somewhere along the line you might have flipped it over to listen to the B-side. But I'm assuming that you didn't. So, number eight, Kiss Me Baby. Okay, number seven. I was just talking about the, the, the lush musical arrangement uh, and the quality of the lyric. Uh, if we're talking about quality lyrics, uh, they don't come much better than uh, from Pet Sounds of 1966, I Just Wasn't Made for These Times. Um, I love this song. It, it, it is such the, the evocation of the realization that you value things that the people around you don't which okay those of us who are you know deep deep end of the pool <laughs> fans of the beach boys we know what what brian was going through as he was recording pet sounds we know the backstory and that makes the song that much richer but you don't have to know any of that stuff to relate to the idea that I've been trying hard to find the people uh, that I won't leave behind. I've, I've, been, I've been looking for the people that will support me uh, and that I can attach to, and I can't find them. I guess I just wasn't made for these times. You know, we, we all, I oh, just gave myself goosebumps with that mental image. We all recognize that, we all respond to that, and that is, I just wasn't made for these times from Pet Sounds. Coming in at number six. Okay, big chunk of the reason why I am a fan of the Beach Boys. Big chunk of the reason why I am such a fan of the Beach Boys is that I adore Carl Wilson. I love his guitar playing. I love his voice. I love his songwriting. Okay, yeah, he couldn't write lyrics for shit, but his music is wonderful. Um, and most of his songs musically I adore. The only, the only, uh, the only uh, uh, sticking point on, on many of these is that he had a tendency to work with crap lyricists. Myrna Smith, for example, is a crap lyricist. Yeah, I don't mind saying it. <laughs> but every once in a while he'd, he'd hook up with somebody and they would knock it out of the park. And they knocked it out of the park with The Traitor. I want to say it's Jack Riley wrote the lyrics for The Traitor. I'll have, I'll have a comment, uh, a crawl down here if, if Jack Riley didn't write the, the lyrics for The Traitor. But 1973's Holland has The Traitor. And I love this song. It is a wonder, musically it's wonderful. It, it's, it's two different songs uh, that are just blended. Well, the song itself changes its character halfway through. I don't know that he wrote it as two separate songs that he attached together, but it sounds like that. Um, and musically, they're wonderful. They complement each other, but they don't really, you know, it's not like the second half is, is patterned after the first half or anything like that. Um, the lyrics are good, and his vocal performance in this is just phenomenal. I love The Traitor. I love Holland. Oh, I love Carl. Number six, The Traitor. Okay, from here on out, we're talking about songs that have, uh, that are wonderfully complex, that have these uh, uh, nice, innovative chord progressions that have wonderful, uh, deep um, musical orchestration, uh, that have these layered vocals that are just, you know, angelic. In their, in their beauty. I mean, from here on out, we are talking about full-blown, honest to God, the Beach Boys for crying out loud. And coming in at number five, uh, my note here is released as a single, didn't chart, Complex Arrangement 101. All right, so this song was released as a single, but it didn't crack the Billboard Top 100 or any of the other charts, at least according to Wikipedia when I looked it up earlier today. Um, I was surprised that it was released as a single, to be honest with you. Um, and Complex Arrangement 101. If, if you want to find an example of a song that you can listen to that will give you insight into 
what you can do to take a song and, you know, reimagine it and, and, and pivot it and maybe turn it and, and look for a way that you can use a different instrument or something. If you want to try to figure out complex arrangement, one of the first songs you want to go to from the album Surf's Up from 1971, it's the title track, Surf's Up. Um, complex Arrangement 101. I mean, this thing is just, it's a, it's a master class in how to build a song or how to build a recording of a song. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, we, I, it, a lot of this is discussion that I, if, if, if this were my top 10 chart topper hits, um, then I would be using good vibrations as the example here, right? It's that, it's that same craftsmanship of the recording as opposed to craftsmanship of the musical performance, craftsmanship of the writing or the vocal or whatever. If the song has that, it has high quality in its composition, high quality in its lyrics, Van Dyke Parks, oh my God, are you kidding me? Um, high quality in the vocal performance that, that Carl can hit some of those notes just amazes me every time I listen to the first part of this. Um, but what really stands out to me when I listen to Surf's Up is the quality of the production of it. Um, number four. Okay, so I just talked about Surf's Up and my comment was, uh, my, my comment on my spreadsheet was released as a single didn't chart Complex Arrangement 101. The comment for this song is released as a single didn't chart Complex Arrangement 102. <laughs> Everything I just said about Surf's Up, we can also say about this song, my number four. I like it just a little bit more than Surf's Up, even though I love all of these songs. All of these songs are like a double plus. You know, so don't come at me with, are you kidding? You don't like that song because I adore all of these songs. But coming in at number four, off of 1970s Sunflower album, we have Cool, Cool Water. Oh my God, do I love this song. Um, again, everything about Surf's Up, complex arrangement. It's, it, it's just that they can get this much sonic imagery out of what, frankly, is not that much of a song. I mean, if, if we're looking at the song, if we, if we just break down the song, these are the chords, this is the melody, these are the words, you're going to look at it and you're going to say, are you fucking kidding me? That is not a song. <laughs> There's just not that much to it. But the end product is stunning. I love Cool, Cool Water from Sunflower. Okay. Coming in at number three. Um, this may be Brian Wilson's crowning achievement as a songwriter. Okay. Uh, I love Brian as a composer. I, I said in my, my Beach Boys video from last year, that uh, Brian is to the latter half of the 20th century what George Gershwin was to the first half, right? I mean, Brian is the George Gershwin of our era as far as I'm concerned. He is the single most dominant um, composer of our time. Completely believe that, thoroughly believe that. Uh, and this song may be the best song that he ever wrote as far as I'm concerned. Um, it is. Uh, it was released as a B side. It was not released as an A side. Um, the B side, the A side that it was attached to, uh, made it all the way up to 89 on the Hot 100. So I'm confident that not very many casual fans have heard 1971's "Till I Die" off of the Surf's Up album. It was the B side, by the way, to "Long Promised Road." Till I Die is a stunningly beautiful song that is also deeply melancholic. Um, it is a song of all of the songs that I have heard that are about or that can be seen to be about depression. This is one of the ones that is closest to nail on the head in terms of what depression actually feels like, at least as far as my own experience with, with uh, clinical depression. Um, he's a cork in the, uh, I'm a cork in the ocean. Uh, I'm a rock in a landslide. I'm a leaf on a windy day, right? I'm, these are the central images of the song. I am this thing. I'm, I'm distinct. I'm an individual. I'm part of a group, 
but I've got no control over what's going on. I'm, I am subject to the whims of, of fate. I'm, I'm a cork on the ocean, bobbing. Right? I'm a, a rock in a landslide, falling into the valley. I'm, I'm a leaf on a windy day. Pretty soon I'll be blown away. It's just the, the, the power of those images is, to my eyes, truly impressive. Um, I, I think it's a wonderful song. Uh, and like I said, it, it's the most sincere evocation of depression that I have heard in a song, or it's at least top three finisher that I've ever heard in a song. I, uh, I love Till I Die. Fantastic, fantastic work. And while we're talking about uh, melancholy beauty, <laughs> 1964 from the album Shut Down Volume 4, we have The Warmth of the Sun. Um, and the warmth of the sun is just hauntingly beautiful. <laughs> it is, it is melancholy. <laughs> it is, uh, um, it differs from Till I Die. Till I Die is just, yeah, we're, these things I'll be till I die, the coda goes. These things I'll be till I die. These things I'll be till I die. Whereas with the warmth of the sun, um, but I have the warmth of the sun within me tonight. Um, life is shit, but I've got the warmth of the sun. I, you know, This is painful, but I have within me what I need to get past it. They're both, Till I Die and the Warmth of the Sun are both, both very powerful songs that I very strongly adore, um, that I very strongly admire. Um, and they are number three and number two. But they are not number one. Number one on my list of top ten songs that explain to the casual uh, observer why I'm a fan of the Beach Boys. Um, in the liner notes to this song, uh, Scott McCoy, who was... Uh, uh, I know Scott McCoy because he was the driving force behind the group, the Minus Five. Uh, if you have watched my videos, I've got a snappy song video that has a minus five song, The Girl I Can't Forget, in it. Uh, that's Scott McCoy. And he wrote the liner notes to an album in which he said about this song, if you can hear Carl sing this line, without the slightest tingle in your spine, you don't love the music capable of being made by the human voice. Um, there are a few th uh, songs that I will listen to that will just make me cry. Uh, some t if I'm watching a song live, I I'll cry at the drop of a hat. Um, I've seen Pink Martini in concert uh, probably a half dozen times, and they usually open with Bolero, and I'll get about halfway through that, and then I, I just, I mean, I'm, I'm blubbering like an idiot. I went to see the Beach Boys on their 50th anniversary uh, uh, tour, and, you know, several points throughout the evening, I'm just, you know... I'm, I'm, yeah, it's just it's like I'm in a, a cartoon and the, the, the tears are, you know, projectiling off of my face. Projectiling, can you use that as a verb? What the hell? I'll, I've, I've, I've made the decision I can use that as a verb. Um, this is one of the, the most reliable tear jerkers for me. And it's not because it's a sad song. It is not a sad song. It is very much a hopeful song. It is a positive song. It's just so damned beautiful that I will listen to it and I'll get to that one point and all the hairs on my arm will stand up and tears will start spurting out of my eyes. And it's that line that Scott McCoy is talking about. The song is from 1972's Carl and the Passions, So Tough. And the song is called All This Is That. And the line is when Carl says, and that makes all the difference to me. <laughs> that was, a, just thinking about it is enough. Oh, I love this song. Um, the song uh, was originally written, uh, Al Jardine uh, was uh, doing a rough um, songization, songalization. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. It's, it's really hot out there, and I had to turn off my fan so I didn't have buzzing, so I'm starting to run out of energy. But uh, Al Jardine wrote a song version of Robert Frost's The Road Not Taken. Um, and or had a song that was echoing that sentiment or something along those lines. Um, and Mike Love and Carl got roped into the writing process. 
and we end up with this song that is just a musically it's wonderful um the vocals on this thing are beautiful it's one of the few songs where i think mike is just i mean knocking this thing out of the park um it's mixed in such a way that it sounds like he's right here right here like almost whispering in your ear but not in a creepy way don't go there it's not creepy um it's a very understated uh, vocal performance from Mike. And Mike doesn't do understated very well. <laughs> Mike is very much over the top. Um, but All This Is That is a wonderful song. Um, if I'm making my list of my 10 favorite Beach Boy songs, regardless, these top three are going to be my top three. Till I Die, The Warmth of the Sun, and my all-time favorite Beach Boy song, regardless of how we slice it, regardless of how we stack it, regardless of how we organize it. All This Is That from Carl and the Passions. So tough. So these are the songs that I would encourage you to listen to if you're not a Died in the Wool Beach Boys fan and you are thinking of becoming one, or you at least want to get some of what I feel when I'm listening to the uh, to these guys. These are the songs you need to listen to. Like I said, I've got a Spotify list down below that you can just go directly to. Boom, knock them out. Uh, you'll thank me later. <laughs> But these are the 10 songs I'd choose. What songs would you choose? Are they different? Uh, I'm sure they are. Uh, drop a note down below. Let me know what you think. I, I always love hearing from you, as long as you're not telling me that I'm wrong. I had one person who told me uh, from the, the first Beach Boys video that I did, who told me that if I didn't like Love You, I wasn't a true fan of the Beach Boys. Yeah, right. Pull the other one. It's got bells on it. I am not the only fan who doesn't like Love You. Uh, that line wraps around the block, my friend. <laughs> Anyway, I don't mean to get off on, on you know, slagging off on, on Beach Boys Love You. I did enough of that the first time. Uh, <laughs> but those are the 10 songs I'd choose. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it, appreciate it if you'd click that like button. Um, go ahead and click the subscribe if you have not already done so. That would be nice. And if you do subscribe, click the bell for notifications. It makes a difference to YouTube folks. I don't know why it does, but it does. So I appreciate the effort. Um, Thanks again for watching today, uh, and I hope that the rest of your day is bright. <laughs> See you soon.